It's 2002, and I'm a student at film school. My friend Simon and I are walking down a quiet street at night, and we're jumped, without provocation, beaten into the pavement by a group of ten young men. A few years later, we received some money from the government, victim's compensation, for loss of work and to get back in the game, as they put it. How about you, David? What are you going to do with this money? They ask me. Hmm. Well. The first people lived on an island of dirt that hovered in the sky. One day, in a fit of rage, a man tore out a tree from the ground. Where the tree had been, there was now a hole, looking down at the water world below. A pregnant woman escaped through the hole, and the birds formed a pillow for her to sit on. They slowly lowered her down onto the back of a giant turtle that had made its shell available as a place for her to rest. A muskrat dove down and brought up some mud from the lake bed. The woman planted some seeds in it. Eventually she would give birth, and the shell of this giant turtle later became the world known as Turtle Island to the Iroquois First Nations of North America. As a young boy, I often explored Grenadier Pond, Toronto, with family. One day my mother pointed out a hatching nest of snapping turtles. As we knelt to watch, the brackish creatures breached the mud, zipping off below the clear waters like shadows. To a five-year-old, it seemed as though the earth was giving birth, and to animals that appeared suitably organic, almost like seed cases. Many cultures saw things with a similar innocence, for some reason relating the turtle with the planet. As the turtles' autumn surroundings were imprinted in their own memories, the creatures were imprinting themselves on me. Dawn at Sukamade Beach in East Java, Indonesia. The green sea turtle entrusts her eggs to the sands of 80 countries, swims through the waters of about 140 nations. After two months underground, 150 green sea turtles are now ready to dig out of the darkness towards the light of the sun the sound of the surf. wild boars, monitor lizards, humans, and monkeys. Either rest in the shade and wait for a turtle's nest to hatch, or dig them up and snack on the eggs. Other times, park rangers get to them first. The debate is decades old. When it comes to saving critically endangered species of sea turtles, 
there are two camps. The in situ crowd, believing turtle eggs should just be left to develop on the beach. And the ex situ group, who dig up the eggs and relocate them to protected hatcheries like this one. While hatcheries seem to yield more hatchlings, others say that only mother turtles know the exact depth to dig and lay their eggs. Too deep, too cold. They will all come out female. Too hot and the offspring will all be male. Still, this is the common practice around Southeast Asia anyway. And while the young are safe from predators here, the in situ folks would argue that survival of the fittest is still a sort of best practice. They say we should interfere as little as possible. Instead of hatcheries, some countries, such as Costa Rica, accept volunteers who patrol the beach and monitor the nests as often as possible. Some might ask, what is a hatchery then, besides a way of looking busy while generating funds from tourism? The debate continues. But especially when I visit a hatchery that has full-sized adult sea turtles living in cramped pools. Well, these conservation centers seem no different to me than the animal markets in the capital city of Jakarta. It's raining down on Monkey Forest in Ubud, on the island of Bali. Bali takes color and slaps you in the face with it, until finally all of your lethargy is gone. Here, turtle meat is a delicacy, which is not at all hard to come by. I met with Pak Griya of the Turtle Center to find out why this island is one of the only places in the world where these endangered animals are actually allowed to be caught and eaten. Kemudian dia dia pelihara dengan kamuflase itu semacam bisnis semacam pelestarian. Padahal sesungguhnya itu malam harinya dipotong untuk kegiatan konsumsi sesuatu dengan merek pelestarian merek itu. Tapi pelan pelan masyarakat akan tahu bahwa itu tidak bagus karena memang dia tidak dukung oleh fasilitas edukasi, tidak dukung oleh uh, apa pengetahuan untuk menjelaskan apa itu penyu bagaimana sebagainya. Tidak, dia tahunya hanya penyu dikirim, dia terima, dia kumpulkan, dia stok di dunia, dipamerkan untuk eksibisi dengan tidak ada penjelasan yang detail apa itu penyu dan biologi dan sebagainya. Kemudian malam harinya, ya dipotong. Lambat laun berjalan kegiatan ini juga nanti akan menjadikan sumber income di mana sebelumnya income nya langsung dari daging penyu dari pemotongan penyu sekarang bergeser income dari eksibisi penyu. Leatherbacks, greens, 
Olive Ridley's, Kemp's Olive Ridley's, Hawksbill's, Loggerhead's. This island country is home to the most variety of sea turtles in the world. All except the flatback can be found nesting along this chain of islands. Dan kemudian tempat ini saya rintis e, bersama dengan WWF dan pemerintah daerah semata untuk e, secara bertahap menghilangkan perdagangan penyu di Bali karena timbulnya perdagangan adalah karena permintaan orang Bali dalam ini untuk upacara agama penyu. Sekalipun itu yang diminta hanya satu, tetapi pelakunya yang minta kadang-kadang minta dua tiga lain selanjutnya. Dan karena permintaan ini pebisnis yang tahu celah ekonomi itu sengaja dengan kado agama ini mengumpulkan penyu-penyu ini didatangkan dari Sulawesi, dari Kalimantan untuk ke tujuan bisnis murni. Sementara lembaga kita dalam ini yang real memakai penyu itu hanya adalah kegiatan simbolis, tidak harus besar, tidak harus mengambil di alam yang besar-besar. Jadi itu itulah dimaksudkan membuat lembaga ini agar ada aspek pelestariannya di mana dari pelestarian itu menyelamatkan telur penyu kemudian menetaskan dan itu membesarkan yang hasil pembesaran inilah sebagian kecil digunakan untuk sarana yardnya orang Bali. In the Hindu epic of Ramayana, the Hanuman monkeys rescue Princess Sita from her kidnapper the giant, Rahwana. These creatures monkey around in restaurants. They yank wires out of parked cars. And yet they're not seen as pests here. Thanks to their mention in Hindu texts, in Bali as in India, you don't mess around with the monkeys here. There are many different sides to the turtle center of Sarangana Island. To the tourist, it seems like straightforward, kind-hearted conservation. Sick or injured turtles swim their lives away here, while relocated nests hatch, later to be released. But like so many things in this developing country, the situation is more dire and less black and white than the average tourist might suspect. In another famous Hindu story, designating the order of the animals, the great world turtle, Kurma Rajya, causes an earthquake, producing an elixir of immortality from Mount Mandalagiri. And with this elixir, the gods become immortal. However, somewhat arbitrarily, due to the turtle's relationship to the ocean, which connects them to Lord Vishnu, the god of waters and continuity, it is required to make a sacrifice of a sea turtle on every full moon night and at every major temple. Their shells are cut open while they are still alive, and then they are cooked, and at least they are eaten. In doing this, it's believed that the turtle will ascend the ladder of the order of the animals. They will either return in a better form or be freed from the wheel of reincarnation forever. After six years of living in Bali, I came to appreciate many different realities. If somebody doesn't believe in death, how can you convince them that they have taken a life? Anyway, in one temple, the lay priest presented his devotees with a turtle made of chocolate instead of a living thing. There are many youthful movements to end Bali's special autonomy that allows them to take 3,000 sea turtles from the ocean every year. Because come on, is anybody actually counting? Bali dikenal sebagai pusat perdagangan penyu, yang mana ujung-ujungnya penyu diperdagangkan dan akhirnya mati. Nah kesimpulannya Bali juga menjadi tempat pembantaian di sini. 
sehingga mengantisipasi hal itu karena sering pelaku-pelaku pebisnis penyu dalam hal ini menghubungkan penyu itu sebagai sarana upacara Hindu, upacara agama tetapi sebenarnya itu tidak benar karena e, melalui lembaga ini dimaksud agar ada sterilisasi di mana kebutuhan untuk upacara agama Hindu betul akan di dapatkan dari hasil pembesaran di tempat ini sementara yang lainnya bersifat konsumtif jadi biar ada tegas pemisahan sehingga polisi dalam ini ada keraguan untuk menangkap dan sebagainya karena pebisnis penyu sering berkedokkan agama sehingga polisi penegak hukum enggan menangkapnya padahal ini jelas sebagai satwa dilindungi yang tidak boleh diperdagangkan Pak Geria, as a Balinese Hindu, is also a benevolent farmer, as much as he is a conservationist. It should be reassuring that the future of the turtle center is closely tied to the future of the sea turtles, and somewhat ironically, also the continuation of this religious exemption for the island. With some of the world's oldest and tallest rainforests, frequent volcanic activity, torrential monsoon rains, this place is comparable only to the Amazon, the Congo. This is Salak Mountain, nearest to the city of Bogor, nicknamed Kotahujan, or the city of rain. Rivers pour downhill from here, passing through the country's capital. Most of the city's neighborhoods are unable to afford waste removal. So Jakarta's rivers are often clogged with trash, causing the streets to be flooded. This is the fourth most populated country in the world. Scenes of poverty around the city radically shook my perspective. I couldn't help but wonder, why sea turtles? Well, because what else, really? What else, if not sea turtles?
cutting through the backyards of 25 million people on a journey from Bogor's mountains and through the cities of West Java. Monsoon waters push out to sea at ports like Tanjung Priok with an accumulation of waste. Merchants here are still using the boats the Dutch ordered built over 70 years ago to move goods and sometimes animals from around the islands in the archipelago. Protected turtles often have an implant, a PIT chip, in one of their flippers. On one occasion, a ranger scanned the chip for me. We would later find out that the turtle had arrived back from Seattle, some 13,000 kilometers away. In a sense, we had made the same trip, to meet here on this beach in Papua. Carried by the locals for hunting, as well as for their own protection, spears stick out of the black sands of Warumung Beach. These tools rest here while the locals patrol through the night. Though all sea turtles are somewhat gargantuan, None are as big as the one that carries a map of the stars on her shell of living, leathery tissue. Leatherbacks, also known as black turtles or penu blimbing, can weigh as much as a small car. Just to see these creatures is becoming an increasingly rare novelty. These are the largest remaining nesting grounds for these critically endangered animals in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Heaving herself off the beach, she calculates the best spot for her eggs, just above the high tide mark. She digs her nest, and she lays her eggs. It took me four days by boat, a five-day wait in the city of Sorong, and a final seven hours on a cigarette boat with three engines running simultaneously to get to my destination. Here I accompanied a group of World Wildlife Fund employees and patrollers who are posted year-round in these true wilds. I found a clever way to run my equipment off a motorcycle battery. We were lucky enough to see six of these critically endangered animals coming ashore to lay. I didn't sleep a wink for two nights. I wonder how many leatherbacks we would have seen 10 or 20 years prior in Warmung, before they were poached to near extinction, their numbers having decreased tenfold since 1940. This is a young mother hawksbill sea turtle, probably a first time egg layer. Hawksbills are also critically endangered. 
The young mother exhales in pain for the emergence of each egg from her body. Finally, and with a lot of effort, she buries her eggs before dragging herself back into the Pacific Ocean. Mother Greens come away from giving birth, drained and exhausted. To form up to 400 eggs takes a lot of calcium which is why a mother only lays up to two nests a year. The beach is like a tool, a vital exterior compartment to her own body. The earth offers her freedom to roam the ocean once again while her offspring are developing, until they hatch in the next two months. These turtles were born here, and are now giving birth here. And it is rumored that some will come back to their home turf to die. Thirty-five years from now, when the embryos within these eggs are full-grown animals, when they return to East Java to nest, I wonder what this beach will have become. In the year 2053, will this new generation return to this beach to be poached or protected? After breaking the waves, they are drawn out by the currents and undertows, personified by the locals as Ratu Laut Slatan, the murderous queen of the southern Indian Ocean. It depends where in the world turtles come ashore. They will either be victims, or they will be venerated. They will either be poached or protected. Perhaps in the future they will arrive at the beaches of their birth to be met with super highways and frightened off by light pollution. Swimming the oceans for the past 230 million years, these marine dinosaurs are now facing extinction and it's mostly because of us. Through donations, the World Wildlife Fund pays a few villagers to patrol Warmo. Returning to the spot where their hunting spears stick out of the sands, three locals have been patrolling since midnight, effectively spotting leatherbacks. This morning, the patrollers came upon an empty nest. It had been opened sometime in the night, but it had been opened from within. Having walked the beaches from midnight until six, the patrollers were tired. They collected their spears and, myself in tow, we headed off trekking 10 kilometers back to their homes in Kampung Warmung. Many locals here have never watched television They've never seen a car. We took a rest on the wooden floor of one of these homes. An earthquake had recently hit the village. Soon after I fell asleep, an elderly woman woke me up. This was the tribal leader. This was Mama. Mama's children were going without school because everything had been destroyed. 
She told me if nobody could help, she planned to evict the conservationists. At least the poachers would return to bring her community some money. Mama pleaded that I would talk to the people, especially the people with money and power. I needed to get the message out. I would find help for Mama, or poachers would return to this place. Desecrating the most important nesting ground across two oceans. On the way back to camp, we came across the platter-like shell of a green sea turtle. It had been left for the dogs after locals poached and ate the animal. Around 10,000 turtles are killed for illegal consumption each year in this country alone. It's six in the morning, and from a womb of black sand, after four to seven days of straight digging, Baby leatherback sea turtles are seeing the bright light of the stars. Digging, clamoring, falling, climbing are like a warm up that allows these creatures to stretch their muscles before swimming away. both the most endangered and the largest of all sea turtles. Leatherbacks can grow to weigh more than a ton, roughly 6,000 times their weight at birth. As their one and only favor this morning, the tides of the Pacific are rising to meet these little leatherbacks. In the story of Turtle Island, North America, the great carapace rises up out of the ocean to give human beings refuge from violence, refuge from the chaos of nature, a place to plant seeds, a place to give birth. At first sight, why had the turtle meant so much to me? Growing up in the suburbs of Toronto, my father would often take his bike down to the local pond. This was his escape from the drunk and wanton violence that often erupted in my grandfather's home. From a young age, my dad knew he had to be different from his father. In 2020, on a long drive through a frigid Canadian landscape, my mother told me that my father, as a boy, would often pass his days spotting turtles sometimes catching them and releasing them again. Rather than going back to his house, my father watched the turtles. And he has never been anything like his father before him. 30 years after I watched the snapping turtles in Grenadier Pond, my palm pressed against the skin of a leatherback's great carapace, I connected to what countless others have felt a larger idea of time, a larger idea of space, a small idea of peace, self-contained, that would surely become a myth if it weren't for the people who are trying hard to make it stick in reality.